All right, thank you very much. Hey, uh, my name is John Fortin. I'm a senior systems architect with MarketAmericaShot.com. Um, we've been using OKD uh, for quite a while, but let me uh, talk a little bit about what Market America and Shop.com is. Uh, so, Market America, uh, we do multiple things. We have different brands. We have isotonics, motives. Uh, we have many different ways of um, bringing people in. Uh, we do jewelry, all sorts of stuff. Um, Shop.com, well, and for in Market America, we're out in eight countries, five different languages, uh, localizations for every country and language that we, uh, uh, where we have uh, businesses. Uh, with Shop.com, we have approximately 87 million products 40, uh, worldwide. Um, thousands of views, millions of views per day, um, personalization, all sorts of things that are back end that make shop.com um, a very individualized service for uh, people to come into. Um, what to know about Market America? We were founded in 1982 by J.R. and Lauren Rittinger, uh, based in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, last year, uh, we had about 850 million plus dollars revenue worldwide, uh, eight market countries, uh, US, Canada, United Kingdom, Australia, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia. Uh, we have about 850 employees worldwide and over 300 IT employees. For technology stack at Market America, uh, we have a mixture of commercial and open source, uh, ranging from Red Hat Enterprise, uh, Microsoft Windows, vSphere, which you know, we do all our virtualization on uh, Rocket Universe Database, SQL Server, um, Adobe Cold Fusion, and a lot of the open source stuff that everybody's heard of, CentOS 7, uh, Java Python. We have a real-time metrics and reporting stack uh, using Devolti, NiFi, Druid, Superset, uh, real-time monitoring with Prometheus and Grafana. Uh, we use Kafka as our message broker in pub sub service. And of course, OKD 3.1 and 4, uh, which is the community's the community supported version of um, OpenShift container platform. Uh, so our microservice journey began back in about Q4 of 2016. Um, we we're starting to look at breaking apart some of our monolithic applications uh, and trying to get into more of a uh, way to more quickly move applications and services out um, for our, our applications and users. Um, we we're looking at containers versus standalone apps and containers you know, had a lot of uh, advantages for us, um, easy to build depending on the complexity of the services, uh, stored in container repositories like Doc Docker Hood, Docker Hub and Artifactory. Um, easy to deploy individual uh, containers, um, both for development and you know, potentially for testing and staging and production. Um, and we looked at multiple different container technologies, you know, standalone, do standalone Docker, uh, which we found great for you know, individual building and testing on somebody's laptop or on individual servers. Uh, we looked at Docker Swarm, uh, which honestly never really took off. Uh, back in 2016, 2017, and we looked at Kubernetes, uh, which, you know, obviously, you know, looking back to 2016 from now is obviously the, the clear winner um, for the orchestration stack. Um, very command line oriented, which, you know, if you're familiar with Kubernetes, you know, everybody here is probably pretty familiar. And there can be a fairly uh, high learning curve, you know, all that YAML that everybody loves. Um, So we really, you know, we we're like, yeah, we like Kubernetes, but how can we go, you know, how can we, you know, move forward and make it a little bit user friendly? Um, again, you know, Kubernetes is great, you know, declarative configuration, tell us what you want, and it just does it, namespaces, um, but not everybody loves the command line and all that, again, all that YAML. So back in that time, we started to look at um, OpenShift Origin. Um, OpenShift had, you know, done a big pivot back from uh, version two to version three and really uh, 
went into the containerization, Docker, Docker containerization um, framework. And we're like, hmm, is that going to give us what we want? So we looked at it. Um, I played with it for, uh, for a good little bit, learned how to install it, um, had some people internally test with it. And we're like, we like this. Uh, nice web-based GUI uh, for many activities, made you know, very user-friendly for our developers. Um, they're able to, if they want to, deploy an application, you know, almost point and click. You know, choose a template, you know, put in a couple of configuration elements, and you're off. Um, we like the enhanced security with role-based authentication um, and cluster and project-based security context. You know, those were all winners for us. We did like the additional capabilities made out based or built on top of Kubernetes, you know, the, the build configuration. So we were able to easily build our applications, um, deployment configurations, templates, um, deploying a new version of an application uh, just by pointing at a Git repo and pressing a button uh, that were, that was very advantageous to us. Uh, we also like to build the fact that we're able to build applications using a containerized process. In this case, uh, almost always uh, S2I or source to image containers. Um, available for many languages, you know, Java, you know, Python, you know, pretty much whatever you wanted. And we were able to take, take advantage of that. You're also able to build your own repeatable process if it didn't, if the containers that were out there didn't quite meet your, meet what you need, you're easy to modify. Um, and we were able to integrate OKD into you know, many uh, CI/CD tools such as Jenkins, which you know we use internally uh, via the REST APIs or CLIs. And if you're a command line person, command line tools were also available. You know, OC, you know, which is the equivalent of um, Kubi CTL. So that was Q1 of 2017. Um, we were pretty happy with OpenShift. Uh, it seemed to fit all the uh, all the things that we wanted in a containerized platform. So now we had to figure out how are we going to actually use AK OKD? How do we move our processes? How do we move our applications? How do we move our services? How do we build our services? What do we have to do in order to make this work? Um, and it was a very iterative process. We had to change how we thought in terms of building from Docker files, you know, or from an application build um, to a build from source process. Um, we had to look at our source repo design and so we could be consistent between different applications so our build process would be consistent. Um, one of the harder things we had to do was remove hard-coded environment information from our repositories. Um, there'd be environment uh, variables, one for dev, one for test, one for production. And then when things would get built, they'd just say, okay, build test, build dev, build prod. Well, we didn't want to do that anymore. We wanted to make sure that we had one image that was going to be across the board. You know, one image to rule them all, so to speak. Uh, no environment specific images. Everything in those images was to be configured by environment variables, um, or config maps or some other thing that we're passing to the image. The other thing was, how do we deploy um, our OKD services? And again, we only want to build in dev, no building in any other environments. Any non-dev environment, pull from images that we put into our repository that were built from dev. And again, environment configuration is provided via environment variables and a deployment config or deployment uh, config maps, which are preferred because they can be shared amongst you know, different applications. Um, and like I said, this was a very iterative process. You know, we, we started with a very simple config map and a template uh, and say, okay, can we deploy an application? All right, how do we have to modify? Do we need to put in various variables are there are there defaults that we have to use or that we can use to make it simpler um, so that that took a little while uh, you know getting the application teams used to them you know how do we do an ingress how do we actually access these servers uh, these services um, so yeah that that took a little while 
Um, so once we did that, once we figured out how to do our builds, how do we deploy? Uh, we're like, okay, let's start moving things through our process. Um, so we built a few clusters. Uh, we have a dev and testing cluster uh, currently running on OKD 3.11, although we do have a 4.7 cluster that we are mark that we are migrating to. Um, three masters and three compute nodes um, that will probably grow, uh, especially when we move to OKD 4 and we start adding uh, some of the features that we want to add um, for OKD 4. Um, we do have a production cluster in a separate data center, um, sized uh, pretty much the same. Again, currently on OKD 3.11, uh, and we are working on moving to OKD 4 uh, after we move to Dev and Test. And we also have a QA environment uh, where we run our Selenium uh, grid testing cluster. This is where we do all of our integration and regression testing. Uh, we have a whole team that um, write scripts to try to go through and test every conceivable piece of our uh, of our application stack, um, black box testing, white box testing, you know, can we make it fail? Does it still work after we do a deployment? Um, all that kind of stuff that, you know, we expect QA to do. And that's actually our first cluster to use um, OKD4 uh, on OKD4.7. Um, each team has their own development and staging or test integration project. Uh, deployments in non-dev are migrated to staging and production via Jenkins, via our deployment team. Um, application teams do not deploy outside of dev. We have a set of application templates that allow us to have consistent creation of applications. Um, again, it's almost point and click. Click on the template, put in your Git repository and a couple other um, environment variables. And within a couple of minutes, uh, your application is ready to go and test. Uh, click on the on the link and or click on the URL that we create, point to it from wherever you're pointing to and go off and test. And this allows us to be very, very quick in our in our uh, development cycle. You know, if we need to make a change, we update Git, commit it, and then click the button again, say redeploy, and it goes out, rebuilds it, redeploys it to dev and lets us test. Once dev is done, Deployment team says, okay, we're going to de deploy it to staging. They do the testing and then it gets deployed to production. Um, those are still manual processes. We do not have a complete end to end deployment process from dev all the way to production. Um, we do see us getting to there eventually, but we are not there yet. Um, applications are front ended by a net scalar load balancer via node ports. Um, this is something that's going to change once we get to OKD uh, version 4. Uh, we're going to be bringing in Istio Mesh, uh, which is allow us to do all of the things that we're doing on the Netscaler uh, to be able to do it natively inside of the cluster and not have to do the setup in the Netscaler. Um, we're kind of excited about that. We're actually hoping to see a performance gain um, along with a whole lot of additional metrics that we currently cannot uh, that we cannot capture. So Q4 2021, where are we now? So we have deployed over 200, over 200 services in dev. Um, we are probably adding one or two services a week, if not more. Um, although, you know, this time of year, we're, we're kind of in a freeze. Primary languages are Java, Python, and Node.js. Uh, we have a, a very active deployment and uh, development teams on all three of those. Uh, we have over 170 services deployed in our staging test environment and over 170 services deployed in our production environment. Uh, as I mentioned before, we are in the active process of migrating to OKD4, uh, in particular 4.7. Uh, QA has already migrated. That was in second quarter of 2021. Uh, due to several architectural changes, uh, the services that we are migrating are taking a little bit longer. Uh, 
naming convention migrations, uh, deprecation of the net scaler um, to the ingress. Uh, that configuration is a is a little bit more complex, so it's taking us a little bit more time to get that nailed down. Um, and we also ran into uh, the Jenkins OpenShift uh, plugin deprecation between OKD 3.x and OKD 4. Um, so it broke some of our automation, and we're still going through that um, in order to fix that and get our automation processes uh, running as we expect them to run. So that's kind of the basis of what we're doing with OKD at MarketAmericaShop.com. Um, we are using it in production. Um, it's been very, very successful for us. Um, we've had very few issues and the automation and um, capabilities that it's given us have, have far exceeded our, ex our expectations. Um, but there are some caveats that you need to really know about um, using OKD in production. Um, the most important one in my mind is the fact that there is no official support. You know, you cannot call Red Hat and say, I'm having a problem with OKD and I need some help. Uh, if you need that level of support, you really need to have the enterprise level um, of OpenShift, um, Open Container Platform. Um, there's no one to call at 2 a.m. Uh, community resources such as Slack and GitHub are available and are very, very active but there's no guarantee that you're gonna find a solution in those. And there's also, you know, community members provide assistance, you know, at their convenience and with the amount of time that they have. You know, we're all busy. Sometimes you have time to look at an issue, sometimes you don't. Sometimes an issue may look interesting and you wanna dig into it. And sometimes you're like, well, I don't have time for that right now. So the community people are great and they're great resources, but um, you really have to be able to to an extent, support yourself. You need to, be able to become proficient at using the locking tools within OKD. Um, you, you, if you're doing an install, you, be, you need to be able to use OpenShift install gather. Um, if you're having cluster install problems, um, you must be able to use OCADM must gather in order to get logs if you have a cluster issue after install. Um, if you open something in Git or if you open something on Slack and you don't provide that, you're probably going to get a gentle reminder that, uh, yeah, you probably need to provide the logs unless it's something, you know, pretty simple, uh, you know, for a solution. Um, you got to get used to using bug, uh, Red Hat Bugzilla. Um, if there's a significant issue within OKD, it's probably something that, you know, it's going to affect OCP also. And if you open a Bugzilla, you're much likely to get some action from a Red Hatter. Um, because if it's a bug in OCP and in, OK, in, in OKD, um, much better chance of being, of it getting fixed, you know, relatively quickly. Um, Self-help is a must. You know, Google's your friend. You know, looking at the documentation, looking, you know, looking at, you know, other issues, you know, is there something similar to what I'm doing? You know, is there something that other people have had? Um, you know, if you're good in IT, you know, use your debugging abilities to try to, to figure this out. Um, it'll make you better. It'll make you more helpful in the community also. And you got to test. Um, if you are planning on using OKD in production, you've got to test. You've got to test upgrades. You've got to test installs. You've got to test pretty much everything and not on your active clusters. You've got to have a sandbox. You've got to have something where you can install the current version or whatever you're using in production or test or whatever you're going to be upgrading. You've got to be able to install it. You've got to be able to run through that process and see if you run into any issues. Um, there's nothing worse than trying to upgrade your cluster and then finding out that it's stuck and it's something that you could have caught if you would have tested in a test environment or a PLC environment. Another thing to, re to understand is that um, OKD and OpenShift container platform run on different operating systems. Um, they're similar, but they're still different. OCP runs on Red Hat Core, uh, Core OS, which is based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you know, very well supported and well maintained um, 
enterprise Linux just distribution. Um, OKD runs on Fedora Core OS, which is which is based on Fedora OS. You know, another you know well maintained uh, operating system. You know, people love Fedora. The issue though is that Fedora and Fedora Core OS um, have a very fast pace of development. Um, it changes very very quickly um, from week to week. You know, biweekly, biweekly, whatever. And OKD can be very, very sensitive to changes and the underlying underlying uh, Fedora Core OS, um, and sometimes with unintended instability. Um, we've had it happen, you know, multiple times, you know, since really we went uh, stable in April, I think it was. Um, usually the fixes are, are relatively quick, um, but you got to be aware. And as I said before, you got to test, 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 test. Don't assume that your that your upgrades are going to go smoothly you got to test an environment first just to make sure uh, not all features in um, openshift container platform are available in okd uh, many operators are not yet available in okd and there are features in ocp that require red hat subscriptions um, and thus will not be available in okd um, there may be equivalents um, that are upstream, um, but you know, may re may require some research uh, on your part um, or you know, discussion within the community. Um, once a new stable version of OKD is released, um, that previous version there are no longer uh, stable re stable releases created. So we just went live with 4.8 not too long ago. Um, so there will not be any 4.7 stable releases. Um, there's still there will still be nightlies and stuff, which may have additional features and stuff, but no more stable releases for the 4.7 branch. Um, when 4.9 becomes available, 4.8 will end stable releases. You know, you'll have a, a last stable release, and then that will be it. Um, Downside with, with nightly releases or nightly snapshots is that they're only available for about 72 hours. So you have to, you know, either you can copy them off somewhere if you need to use them, um, but realize that those are very, very quickly um, updated and removed. As I mentioned before, having a sandbox environment um, is vital. You've got to be able to test installs. You've got to be able to test upgrades. You've got to be able to test if you're putting in um, some type of new operator, which could have impact on the rest of your cluster. Um, for instance, um, Istio Mesh. You know, Istio Mesh is, is very, I'll say, intrusive you know, into the networking of OKD. You may not want to install it initially in your production environment. You want to make sure you have some place where you can test it safely be able to uninstall it, reinstall it, reconfigure it, break it, and be able to recover without affecting you know, the rest of your clusters. You also need to know how to recover from failure. Unfortunately, things do happen. You need to be able to understand how to back up your Etsy database, your etcd databases. You need to understand how to, re how to recover a master in case you lose one. Um, Kind of the basic things that you would do with any application. You need to know how are you going to recover from it if something goes down and breaks. Um, those processes have to be tested, and they have to be tested again and tested again. You know, in some way that you would you know do your normal DR. Um, that's an important process within you know of your uh, OKD environment. The other thing I say is, is become engaged you know, in the OKD community, you know, hopefully prior to an issue. Um, it always helps if somebody already knows your name and knows, you know, what you've been going through and stuff. They may be more inclined to reach out and say, okay, I see you're having a problem. Maybe you can try this or do that. Um, sometimes if you're, you know, doing a cold problem and nobody knows who you are, it might be, well, let's see what happens and maybe somebody will help. Uh, become a tester. You know, learn how to test nightly, pro, uh, nightly and stable release, releases as you can. Um, it helps you, it helps other people, um, helps you, you know, helps identify issues that may be um, in your environment that nobody else is seeing. Um, so it may be a bug that 
it's a bug, but nobody else is doing it because everybody else is installing on vSphere and you're, you're installing on, you know, some bare metal or something. Um, it's happened, but you know, we are always looking for new testers. Testing is great. Um, keep an eye on the Git repo discussions and issues. You know, look at those, see what, see what is being identified. Are there issues that you can help solve? Um, are there issues that you're interested in? You know, you go look at the source code, you know, it's like, oh, how does this work? How do I build this? How do I build, um, you know, a very a piece in component of OpenShift? Because I think there's a bug. Can I, you know, come up with a patch, you know, and test it and build it and say, oh, look, okay, I'm able to fix this. Um, join the Slack channels. Uh, you can learn a whole lot just by watching the discussions that are happening in the Slack channels. You don't even have to be involved. Um, join the working group. Um, working group is what is basically trying to keep you know, OKD going. Um, what is our focus? What is our focus going forward? How are we going to get there? Um, how can we get more people involved? Um, you know, Diane does a great job. You know, with you know, keeping the working group going. Uh, we'd love to have more people. The more people, the merrier. Uh, so feel free to, to reach out and, and join the working group. Um, and that's, that's pretty much what Market America is doing with OKD. Our journey, like I said, started in Q4 of 2016, and our journey is continuing um, Q4 of 2021. We are looking forward to migrating everything to OKD 4.8. Um, we're looking forward to all the enhanced capabilities that we're getting um, from OKD 4, all the way from metrics um, to scalability, to automation, uh, ease of use. Uh, the, the difference between 3 and 4 is amazing. Uh, the difference between 4, you know, 4.7 and 4.8, you know, and 4.9. There's so many features coming down the road that I'm really excited about it. Uh, I can't wait. I hope I hope that you know we get more people that are involved and more people that are excited about OKD going forward. Uh, that was probably pretty short and pretty quick, and I probably talked too fast. Um, but thank you very much, and uh, I'll be happy to take any questions as uh, as we go forward.